Good morning, Lighthouse. My privilege to be able to share a devotion with you this morning again, just around fear. And I want to talk to us about um, Jesus and Matthew chapter 6 from verses 25 to verses 34, where Jesus talks about not worry. He says, do not worry. And I would think that for most people, their primary fear is fearing lack, lack of money, a lack of provision. And I want, to hear what, I want you to hear what Jesus says about this. He says this in Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body not more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Oh, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Why do you worry about your clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, how much more will he not clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself, and each day has enough trouble of its own. And so I just want to highlight three things here, or four things here that Jesus tells us. First thing that Jesus tells us to do is don't worry about provision. Secondly, he gives us two reasons why we should not worry about provision. The first is that he says, look at the birds of the field, at the birds of the air. And he says, your heavenly father feeds them. And he asks this question, are you not more valuable than a bird? Did Jesus die for birds? Did Jesus come to earth, get crucified for birds? No ways. He, got, he came to earth to get, and he died for the salvation of mankind. And my friend, you were bought with the precious blood of Jesus. And that makes you valuable and precious. And that make, the Bible says that you've been given the right to become a child of God. Let me tell you something. My children are not going to be hungry and they're not going to be naked. I'm going to make sure that I feed them and I clothe them. Now, if I, just a mere fallen earthly father, am going to ensure that for my kids, how much more, Jesus says, are you not more valuable than, 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 than animals? And if us as earthly parents want to look after our children and feed them and clothe them, then you don't have to worry because you are valuable to your heavenly father and he will feed you. So that's the first reason why you should not worry because you are, you are God's child and you are valuable to him. And then the second reason that God says that um, uh, we should not worry is in verse 32. Pagans, pe people that do not know God, people that do not believe in God, they run after possessions and money and clothing and food. But the Bible says here, your heavenly father knows that you need them. So the second reason we should not worry about this is because God knows. God knows you, he knows your needs, and he promises that he will provide your needs. And so you, the second reason not to fear is God knows your circumstances and your situation. Then the third piece, the third thing that Jesus said, so one, don't worry. Two, why shouldn't you worry? Two reasons. One, because you are valuable to God. And two, God knows your needs. The third thing that Jesus says to us, he says that, he gives us something that we should do. He says, don't worry, but do this. And this is found in verse 33. What should you do? You should seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And then as a byproduct, not as a goal, he will give you all these things that the world is chasing. You see, the goal for the Christian life is to enter the kingdom of God and for God's kingdom to come from heaven to earth. And so we are to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, how does God's kingdom come on earth? God's kingdom is manifest on earth when God's will is done on earth. See, God has got his will revealed in his word for your marriage, 
for your children, for your finances, for your job, for your home, for your church, for your ministry. And just do the general will of God well. What is that? Love people. Forgive them. Love your children. Love your wife. Be generous. Be willing to share. Give your tithes. Give your offerings. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Be kind. Just do the general will of God well. The things that you know that are right, seek those things and give yourself to those things. And as you give yourself to those things, to be a great employee, to be a great boss, to be a great businesswoman or businessman, as you just seek first God's kingdom and his rule and reign in your life in those things, God promises that he is going to provide for you. So Lighthouse, I trust this encourages you. Life is not rocket science. Do the basics well. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep yourself in his love. Keep yourself in the value that you have before him. Keep yourself in the fact that you are known by God and he knows your circumstances. Do your little bit so that you release God to do his big bit, big bit in your life and fear will be broken off of your life. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for light us. I rebuke fear and anxiety and I pray, Father God, for peace of heart and mind and I pray that we would rise up and do the things that we can do so that you can do the things that only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, Lighthouse. Have a great day. Ciao.